Hi everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel Dr. Srinivas Medical Concepts and my FB page Dr. Srinivas Concepts. This is Dr. Srinivas, Neurologist from Rajmandri, Andhra Pradesh, India. I am also the medical author of the book Focused Neurology. My email is sriklpm at gmail.com. Today we are going to talk about a very very interesting topic, the testing of diplopia, the testing of double vision, cranial nerves part 30, oculomotor nerves part 16. Evaluation of ocular mal alignment diplopia. Testing for diplopia and ocular mal alignment may be subjective or objective. Testing for diplopia and ocular mal alignment may be subjective or objective. The subjective test depends on the patient's observation of images. The subjective test depends on the patient's observation of images like red lens and medox rod. The objective test on the examiner's observation of eye movements during certain maneuvers. So subjective is from the patient's point of view and objective is from the examiner's point of view. The principles evaluation of ocular mal alignment diplopia, the subjective test principles. When a patient has diplopia because of extra ocular muscle weakness, she sees them as two images. When a patient has diplopia because of extra ocular muscle weakness, she sees as two images. The real image falls exactly on the macula of the normal eye and therefore the image is very sharp. The real image falls exactly on the macula of the normal eye and therefore the image is very sharp. Whereas, whereas the false image falls on the retina beside the macula of the paratic eye and therefore it is not sharp, it is, it is hazy. The real image falls on the macula of the normal eye the false image falls on the retina beside the macula of the paratic eye. The farther away from the macula that the image falls, the farther peripherally the misinterpretation of its origin. The farther away from the macula the image falls, the farther peripherally the misinterpretation of its origin. As the eyes move in the direction of the paratic muscle, the separation of image increases and the false image appears to be more and more peripheral. For example, if there is a right lateral rectus, if there is a lateral rectus palsy, as the eye moves in the direction of the paratic muscle, the separation of image increases and the false image appears to be more and more peripheral. The false image is usually fainter, it is not sharp it is hazy, it is fainter than the true image because extra macular vision is not as acute as macular vision. So the false image is usually fainter than the true image because the extra macular vision is not as acute as the macular vision. So these are all the principles of the examination of the ocular movement especially in terms of diplopia. I hope you have enjoyed uh, watching this video. The other important concepts of neurology I put in a book called Focus Neurology written by me in a question and answer format which will be very useful for medical students and doctors and it is available online from all leading booksellers including Amazon. So if interested it could be bought online. Uh, if you have enjoyed this video please like and share the link to all your friends but please subscribe to my YouTube channel Dr. Sinvas Medical Concepts and my FB page Dr. Sinvas Concepts. Thank you. Bye.